Hey everybody, Ms. Dietrich here. We're going to take a look at using a Punnett square to make predictions about the offspring of these two guinea pigs. So before we start, we need to know a little bit about fur color and the alleles that go with it. So if we take a look at this black parent guinea pig, it's a homozygous. How do we know it's homozygous? Because these letters are the same. So it has the two dominant alleles for black fur. If we look at the mother guinea pig, she's also homozygous, meaning that the alleles are the same but she has the alleles for the white fur, which happen to be recessive. And recall that geneticists use a lowercase letter to denote a recessive trait. Geneticists use an uppercase letter to denote a trait of a dominant, or I'm sorry, uppercase letter to denote a dominant trait. So to create a Punnett square, we have to take the alleles that dad has, which is an uppercase B and an uppercase B, take the alleles that the mom has, which is a lowercase b and a lowercase b, and look at all the outcomes that we could get for the offspring. So if we focus on this first box, we're going to cross this letter with this letter. So we have a dominant allele with a recessive allele. So what would that look like? It would end up being a heterozygous black furred offspring because black is dominant, recall. Now, same thing here. If we cross this letter with this letter, then we get the the heterozygous offspring, again, that would be black. If we look at what would happen in this square, we're taking this letter right here and crossing it with this letter. So same thing, another heterozygous black furred offspring. And likewise here, if we take this allele, which is dominant for black, and cross it with the recessive white fur allele, we're still going to get a heterozygous black furred guinea pig. All right, so what if we took two of the offspring and cross them. So let's say we take, which doesn't matter, so let's say we take this one and this one and cross them, right? So let's you know, assume this is a male and this is a female, we cross it. So if we make a Punnett square and show what's the outcome, whoops, didn't really make that very good, but I think it'll work. So this, let's call this one dad, and let's call this one mom. All right, so again, this is this parent and this parent goes here. And if we run the Punnett square to figure out what the outcome of the offspring would be, here we're going to have a homozygous black furred offspring. So that's black fur. The phenotype would be black. Here we have a heterozygous. We're going to cross this with this. And that would also be a black furred guinea pig. And then here we're taking this letter and crossing it with that. So that's another heterozygous black furred offspring. And then here we're going to take this letter and cross it with this letter. So that we're back to white fur. We have the two recessive alleles for white fur. So that's a white furred offspring. Now, most people would say, why would you get white fur from two black furred guinea pigs? And the reason why that's possible is because both of these parents have the allele for white fur. And if you cross that in the right way, you're going to get a white furred offspring. So let's use this to help us with an assignment like this. So it says the Punnett square shows a cross between a black guinea pig, uppercase B, uppercase B, so the two dominant alleles, and a white guinea pig, that's lowercase b, lowercase b. What is the probability the offspring will have white fur? So let's put one of them here, that's this parent, and let's put this parent right here, and let's fill in the Punnett square. So here we're going to always write the uh, uppercase allele first just because it's dominant. We do that for formatting purposes. So we're going to put the uppercase B first and then the lowercase b. So that's going to be black, a heterozygous black offspring. All right, and then the same thing here. We're going to take this letter and cross it with that. So that's going to be the same thing, a black furred offspring, but heterozygous. So remember, this is homozygous, and so is this. All right, same thing here. We're going to cross this with this. Another black furred offspring. And then this goes with this. All right, so again, that that's black. So that's pretty much what we were looking at just a few minutes ago with the other side that we were examining. So if we answer the question, 
Let's read it again and make sure we understand. The Punnett square shows a cross between a black and a white guinea pig. So we just did that. What is the probability that the offspring will have white fur? And we're showing 0%. None of them have white fur. They all have black fur, even though we have a white furred parent. All right, let's skip to the next one. The Punnett square shows a cross between, now we're talking about heterozygous, Two, this is a heterozygous and we have a homozygous white guinea pig. What is the probability that the offspring will have white fur? All right, so let's use this pun and square. Let's put this parent right here on the top. And we'll put the homozygous white guinea pig here. And let's see what we get. All right, so we're going to cross these two letters here. And that would end up being a black furred guinea pig. Remember the uppercase black allele is dominant. And then we're going to take these two and cross them. So that's a lowercase b and a lowercase b. So that would end up being white fur because we don't have that black furred dominant allele masking or covering up the white fur. Here we have another heterozygous black furred. So it's going to be uppercase b, lowercase b, black. All right. So by the way, just to clarify, so this would be the genotype, and this is the phenotype that I'm writing underneath it. All right, and in this box, if we put in the genotype or the alleles, we have a lowercase b and a lowercase b. So we're back to a homozygous white furred offspring. All right, so now let's use what we have here to answer the question. So again, they wanted to know what is the probability that the offspring will have white fur? So we have half of them being white and half of them being black. So that ends up being a 50%. Now, when it comes to what allele combinations would produce white offspring, we only have this allele combination to produce white. And why is this allele combination not white? It's because this allele, this dominant black furred allele masks or covers up the white fur. So that's it. You only have that one um, arrangement of alleles to give you the white fur. All right, so hopefully you found this helpful to help you understand a little bit more about pun and squares.